Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here, and we're here with a new series that we are doing monthly recaps for the foreseeable future of everything we ate. We eat a lot of food in this channel. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to keep up with all the things we eat, even for us, we're just this year, we've got spreadsheets upon spreadsheets upon spreadsheets, so we thought we'd do a sort of monthly recap to show you our favorites and uh, see how this format works. If you guys like it, of course, uh, comment, subscribe, all that, and let us know that you want to see more things like this. And uh, if the format is doesn't work, we'll, we'll adjust things needed, but let's get into this. Be sure to revive. You heard the girl. So. Always start with drinks. So I, I think the princess is drinking my Jameson. Well, we're both drinking whiskey, but yes, I'm drinking Jameson and he's drinking Larceny. And ever since our boathouse thing, I've been obsessed with Larceny. I don't know how that happened. It's pulled me away you, from the Irish whiskey. You got a bourbon flight, that's what happened. <laughs> ah, nice and strong, like her. So, first up, uh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna break this down into categories. Entree, drink, best of, so best of worst of each, uh, dessert, a festival food and then festival drink and then we're also going to review our uh, the bare necessities list princess and necessities list sort of give you guys like what we like best for the month maybe it should be the princess and the bare necessity list it's lengthy but i like it maybe i don't know i don't know you guys let us know what you think so best entree of the month princesses first as always i um Always love the vegetable skewer from Coral Reef. I rated that one a five. I also rated the uh, Felucia Kefta, the Impossible Kefta five from Docking Bay. And I guess if I have to pick one, they're both pretty similar. I'd probably go with Coral Reef. I think Coral Reef was probably my favorite. Because the yes the portion size is smaller at coral reef than it was before but it's still more food than you get with the reduced portion size with docking bay yeah, yeah i suppose it is what was larger than docking bay uh so that, that that's your best yeah i would say best is um the vegetable skewer from coral okay. reef mm -hmm. now as far as like the best and worst we basically just went through our rankings so we're keeping track of those now uh, to, to, to see what numerically ranks the best and the worst. Now, just like everything else on this channel, ratings are subjective. You people will love some food more than we will, and we will hate some things that you guys absolutely love. Uh, so for most of my ratings, I stayed true to what I actually rated it. But for my best, I'm sort of at a crossroads because what I rated the best this month was the roasted tofu for flying fish. It was good. However, my favorite from this month is the slow roasted pork belly from Flying Fish. So Flying Fish is still your favorite restaurant that we went to this month. Easily the favorite I went to this month. But favorite, if I'm picking a, my, my best dish, for me, it's going to be the pork belly. That's fair. I personally loved the tofu. I just thought it was a little bit smaller than the previous tofu steak and the breading was just was a little bit thicker. It was it was a little crummy for me. So if it was a little lighter on the breading, I think it would have been higher ranked. But go watch that video. We had a great time. Yeah, And we'll leave links to all this stuff in the description so you guys can go. And decide for yourselves. Do you align with our ratings? Do you not align with our ratings? We like to hear feedback from you. Like mm -hmm. these ratings are all subjective. You guys are gonna love some things. We're just trying to give you the most information we can about each dish, so you can make up your own mind. <laughs> this is what we expect. Worst entree of the month. Um. Well, we didn't really have any horrible entrees that stood out in my mind, at least well, for vegan food. My my worst was. Was pretty easy for me to decide for the month. For sure, but for me, I my lowest rated item was the plant based loco moco from Kona. I gave that one a two and a half. Um, it just wasn't as good as the last time that I went to Kona, and th that doesn't necessarily mean that it was bad. It just means I didn't have anything that was like bleh. Which, which just hurts my heart too. That's one of my favorite dishes at Kona. You rated it much higher than I, I did. I love that dish, even though it's it's not a, you know. 
a bear dish, a carnivore dish. I daydream about that dish constantly. And it's one of the only reasons I go back to Kona at all is that dish. So we ordered the same thing in that video. As far as my worst dish of the month, I was probably too kind with the rating that I gave this dish, but it was definitely the specialty chicken sandwich from oh, Leaky, Leaky Cauldron. Cauldron. And that that thing was sad. That whole experience that, was sad. That dish was about as special as people that refused to get vaccinated. I did not like that sandwich. It was the bacon did nothing. The chicken was subpar. And I don't even know why it's called the specialty chicken sandwich because there's literally nothing special about it. Nah. 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 It's because, because the J.K. Rowling, it's as special as J.K. Rowling. I feel like most of the food in, in all the Wizarding World needs an upgrade. Snacks are fine. She won't the let food that happen. is pretty awful, but we'll get to that later. So, best drink of the month. I I guess I was being silly with my best drinks because my top two best drinks were both consumed on New Year's Eve. And they both got five out of five Betty Whites because we were drinking in honor of Betty White. Um, the Blackberry Moonshine and the Tennessee Lemonade, both from Regal Eagle. If I had to pick one, it's obviously going to be the Blackberry Moonshine. That one is my jam. I love getting that one, and it is the number one selling drink at Epcot. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's up there. I would say that uh, one of the best cocktails in all of World Showcase. It's not the best in World Showcase, but it is up there. Now, for me, this month, I had I had gave three drinks, five out of five claws, which is odd. Uh, because I do hate on drinks a lot. But honestly, my favorite for the month. And to give it to you, like, I, I Cantaloupe, which I, you guys know I love. I love cantaloupe. And the cantaloupe from China and that in the World Showcase is one of my favorite drinks. Epcot has the best drinks of any park, bar none. That's just, that, that's just a fact. And if you don't believe me, then, well, you probably don't drink that much. <laughs> um, and then the more margarita from Pandora is my, one of my all-time favorite drinks. And I try to talk her into going to let me go get one every single time we go to Animal Kingdom. I lose sometimes, but I always attempt. Sometimes he tries to get us to go to Animal Kingdom just for the drink. I do. I love that margarita. I really do. It's so sad. It's just boba balls and a margarita. It but is. I absolutely frozen love it. margarita. Uh, I love frozen margaritas. She's always like a non I like frozen. I like my drinks to be on the rocks. I don't really like them to be slushies. I love slushies. That's, that's a, probably one of my many weaknesses is I love slushies. I don't care if drinking out of a straw makes me look not manly. They're fun, and I like fun. But honestly, my favorite drink of the month was a non-alcoholic drink. And I know there's lots of sides, and there are lots of you will hate me. You can flame me in the comments about it. But my favorite, favorite drink of the month, frozen butter beer. No shame. Even Sam's the alcohol. And, I mean, there's probably a little bit of bias built in there because I love cream soda. It's like my second favorite drink, third favorite, second favorite, I think, non-alcoholic drink. And frozen buttermilk just did it for me. But then you hated so hard. We both hated so hard on the flaming mode for not having alcohol. We did. And I I'm, I still think there should be an alcoholic version of the butterbeer. However, I agree. The frozen butterbeer to me was life-changing. Like that was like okay. heaven for me. What if we go get a frozen butterbeer? And we go get a fire whiskey. And you throw the fire whiskey in the frozen butter. I don't cinnamon butter whiskey in all of my drinks. That sounds awful. But that's like the only liquor. I mean, I guess you could go to like Finnegan's and get a shot of something. And then like you're not allowed to mix them in front of the team members. So you'd have to like be all sneaky about it. I just like the frozen butter beer. I'm just leaving it at that. I know I'm never in an alcoholic version at Universal, but... Uh, that's what I'm going with for the month. More margarita and the cantaloupe are two easy hits for me any day of the week. But if I'm picking my favorite for this month, the frozen butter beer gave me a childhood joy I haven't experienced at Universal in some time. Okay, that's period. fair. And that's on period. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will never get to know the joy that is butter beer. Worst drink for the month. These are always so easy. The wor We have a lot of bad drinks. We do. 
This was this was not hard for me to decide. At I all. think we both agreed. Um, the Americano from Tutto Italia was. I gave that one a one. I mm. thought that one was the worst. I also hated the Rum Island Breeze from Backlot Express, but I didn't really like anything that we had at Backlot Express. That's true. So, uh, so what's your worst? I guess the Americano, because I I don't rate things a one very often, and that one got a one. Uh, I think I rated them both the same. No, uh, you... Wait, yes, you did. Uh, I'm going with the Backlot. The the Rum Island Breeze from Backlot Express was trash. It was my idea to get it, and I hated it. Yeah, (laughs) I'm just glad we only got one and not two. I I drank it because of the alcoholic content, but um, the drink itself was awful, and... uh, it will probably be a long time before I ever bring up going to Backlot Express ever again. What if they have like ever. some sort of special dessert or something? Eh. Their 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 history of quality is not great, and so, they have not been great for a long time. Okay, okay. Backlot Express or ABC Commissary. I don't know. I feel like they're in the same trash pile right now because I'm still mad at them for that, that Wookie cookie as well. Mm-hmm. You both ruined oatmeal cream cookies for me, and then you gave me bad ribs. That's those are two things dear to my heart. Yeah, but if you had to pick one to go to consistently, which one would you go to? ABC Commissary. Ooh. <laughs> I'd rather roll the dice to go to Bed Logs Reds again. All right. At least ABC Commissary's menu changes eventually. That, that's true. Backlot Express menu has not changed. Since before we started doing YouTube. It's true. Except for the addition of, like, I think the cookie. I think the, the hummus was new, like, maybe four years ago. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Mm, it was gross. Let's just leave. They're, avoid the Rum Island Breeze from Battle Express. Yeah, it was just, there's so many other good. Stop it always Go see Canteen. Ron at, uh, yeah, mm. Oga's is good. Or go see Ron at the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge. Best dessert of the month. I did not have a lot of desserts this month, surprisingly I to had, me. Well, I had more than she did. And the two desserts that I did try this month, both, I gave a five. So, it's really, really hard. You just like dessert. I don't eat dessert as much as I used to, and, and that's your fault. I don't want you to have dessert. But, um, Definitely my fault. Uh, it's the Bailey's Almond and Jack Daniels Mousse from Coral Reef. I rated that a five. I've always thought that was the best. Well, the Chef Tony version from La Cellier was the best, but that's an off-menu thing. Um... And the key lime cake that I got from Flying Fish this past couple of days that I serenaded to. Um, you did sing to it. That's for sure. It it was very delicious. That one got a five as well. It was super tart. Um, and I think just because it was beautiful presentation, extremely delicious. But I think um, for my favorite, I'm going to stick with the classic cake that I've loved at Epcot all these years. The... Um, liquor filled, filled cake, big surprise. Yeah. This the, is my favorite. The Bailey's almond cake is my my favorite. It wasn't even close to other desserts. That was my favorite, by far. I would eat that, provided not the downsides of eating too much sweets. Children and adults and in, and in, in, out there in the subscriber land, uh, I would eat that cake every day. And I am not a dessert person in the least. I avoid dessert like people avoid mm-hmm. spiders. Like, I avoid spiders, but I would eat that Jack Daniels cake every day and never get sick of it. It's your Disney cupcake. It is my Disney cupcake. Worst dessert of the month. Only Bear can rate this. Super, super easy was that trash Wookiee cookie. I am so bad at that thing. I was looking forward to it. I had hopes. I love oatmeal cream, like, sandwich cookies. That you thing, do. that was not an oatmeal cookie. That was like a sugar cookie with a hint of oatmeal. And I feel insulted for having eaten it. I don't know how people eat that thing. Assuming it's, it's Star Wars and it looks like a Wookiee, it's terrible. A pork cookie would probably taste better. So sad. Best festival food. Festival food is always like 
extremes. That's either really good or really terrible, rarely in between. Sometimes it's a little avant-garde and yeah. you need to think about it for a while before you can really decide if and, it's and, good or not. And this month we had farts and all that stuff is avant-garde. So. Yeah, for the most part, I would say. Um, my favorite thing was definitely, without a doubt, the baby food. <laughs> Bear, Bear calls it the baby Carrot food. Carrot baby food. Carrots three ways. I had that. It was um, pretty good. Both days that we went to the festival, the next time that we go to the festival and do a video, I'm probably going to put that in the video again and go eat it again. Like because that third time? Fourth time? It was third time. Third time. Because it was just that good. Um, you have to eat all of it together, though. You you just eat one component by itself, and it doesn't give you that like beautiful Remy appreciation for carrots that I was shocked to have received. I would agree. You have to eat them together. It's just three types of carrots. And it is still baby food. Uh, my favorite for the month? Or the festival for festival food was the carne asada. I love that. I don't eat steak very often. Or beef. I try to keep my beef consumption down to a bare minimum, especially now. Uh, but I love that. And I would easily have eaten that as like a full entree because it was so juicy and delicious. and uh, Which is a surprise because... I don't often like a lot of the farts food. That's the arts for you. New, people not in the know. People that do not know we call farts farts. Or if you don't like it, farts, we could say I farts. But they're not just farting around farts. Too much of a mouthful. But yes, the carne asada was probably my favorite. Now my worst, your worst, I, would, I definitely want to hear your worst. My worst festival item? I actually, my lowest rated thing that I got to have, because the vegan options were very slim to none, was the bratwurst, the plant-based bratwurst. I gave that a three and a half, which is not terrible. And then um, I gave the beets, the beet dish, I gave that one a four. So those two are like the lowest ones. And in hindsight, I feel like um, the beets would be my worst one just because when I had it I said it was a great way to introduce somebody to beets and I still agree with that but if I was if I was hungry at the festival especially because there isn't a lot of food for me to eat I'm either going to go get the carrots three ways or I'm going to go get the bratwurst and that's just what I'm going to do because that's what's filling so I don't know why they keep that bratwurst it's, I will admit and I did admit in the video that it is the best that it has ever been but it is a joke festival dish in a pavilion that, that I, not even a pavilion, an outpost that I find extremely insulting. Uh, no. And then it's also being celebrated for Black the month of uh, Melanin Majesty, Black History Month, and uh, Disney. Do better. Oh, it's man. Terrible. That list was just. Terrible. I was fuming when he was reading it. That, to me. that can be a whole other video. We'll we'll save that for the next time I'm at Epcot. But you will hear about you'll hear from me on that one. That was I'm not happy about that one. My worst dish, food dish of the festival, was a beef Wellington by far. That thing was terrible. It was overcooked. It was chewy. The pastry crust was not nice. The sauce wasn't great. Uh, Gordon Ramsay would have a word. Word with Disney over that beef words, Wellington. Uh, many words. He would definitely call somebody an idiot sandwich. That thing was just not or a Muppet. indicative of what beef Wellington is supposed to be. And it was basically, in my mind, a waste of money. What I think is weird about that one specifically is the fact that, like, last year when they had it, you had, like, a little mini welly. And then, like, this year they, they just, just gave you slices two slices. And I think it was about the same price, if not more, for the one this year. So that was really confusing to me and probably contributed to why it didn't taste as good because you're not supposed to slice it and let it sit the way they they do the festival-style food even, when it comes even to Wellington. Even that, it was overcooked. It was just trash from the time it hit the plate. Let's just say it. Don't, don't waste your money on the welly. Fe best festival drink. I picked the um, chai hard cider from, I believe it was the Morocco Pavilion, Tangerine Cafe. Um, and I got that drink both days that we went to the festival as well because, or was it from, or was it from a refreshment outpost? Which one? The chai? No, the chai Tea beer? Was, No, the blue raspberry was from. Oh, that's right. To, well, where we're, I'll, I'll put in the description, and there'll be a link to the video so you can see where, where it is. I, it escapes me right this moment. But, um, yeah, 
went there twice. I'm pretty sure it's Morocco now that I'm thinking about it. Went there twice, got the drinks. They were amazing. When we go back, I'm probably going to get that one again too. I think my favorite drink for the month was the Smoky, for the festival was the Smoky Raspberry. That, that drink was enough different for me to like excite me. That felt like drinking art to me. That was a fun drink. And I, I drink more of those easily. Worst festival drink. I had like three beers and a and a wine, a rose or a champagne that all tied for a two rating for me that I just did not like. Probably the worst one for me was that mammoth white ale. Really? That was not bad. Well, my worst drink was super easy. Um. I might have the worst memory. It's worse than Swiss cheese. I write things down and I still forget everything, which is why now we're now keeping spreadsheets of like basically everything that we do. Well, you guys asked for that too. You did. Uh, thank you. Thankfully for that. But my worst drink I still have not been able to scrape from my memory is the Lily from the Mexican stand, the Festival of the Arts, because that was like drinking perfume for me. I absolutely hated that drink. That's actually a um, designer drink. The I forgot her name. She's a designer that did like the mother-daughter ears. Mm. Lily something is her name. That was her drink. That's why the little glass said XOXO Lily. It was terrible. I hated it. It was special. Literally like, like drinking perfume. The Mexico Pavilion Too always floral. has a celebrity come do a drink. Well, and usually it's successful. This year I thought it was by it, And I'm not taking it back. No it's offense fair. to the designer, but the drink itself just did nothing for me. It didn't taste good. It didn't look good. It was I, like $15. Yeah. So, so it wasn't priced well like either. That. I think we kept the cup. Did we keep the cup? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, you got to have something to justify your mm -hmm. ridiculous purchase. But yeah. Uh, if you like like elderflower-ish drinks or like really floral cocktails, it's worth trying. But for me... That's an absolute no. I would rather lick a post-it stamp for fun. That's not fun either. No, it's not. So, that is our best and worst for the month. Huh? Now we want to go over the bare necessities list. We had six total items this month. I was probably a little bit generous this month with bare necessities. You were just shoving out those fives for I'm everyone. Making it rain on theme park food this month. Even though all the prices went up. But a lot of these, a lot of these were expected because we revisited a lot of restaurants that reopened, and then we you know we had uh, some bar crawl videos, did some shot videos. So a lot of these are their necessities list, but they're not necessarily like new for me. They're just necessities. So if you're planning a trip to the park, it is a necessity item that you should try. Hmm. So the first up was the Canto Lupi, which I it's one of the. When there's not a festival on in China, I have a hard time justifying stopping for any drinks in China, unless we're getting the Baijiu shot, which we've come to love, mm -hmm. or Cantaloupe. And the Cantaloupe is where our little stir animation comes from that we do when we go there. And because like, time. if you don't stir that drink, it will hurt you. But I love cantaloupe juice, so cantaloupe with alcohol is a Easy win for me. It's a little artificial. On It's a little on the artificial side for me, mm. but it's still a very good drink. I'm saying that if you're doing a drinking around the world attempt, that drink needs to be on that list. I agree. Uh, next up, we have the Bailey's Almond and Jack Daniels Mousse, which we absolutely love. We've loved it since it was first added. Um, I devoured it the first time we had it. The Princess Blinkton that was gone. Mm -hmm. And we yep. absolutely still love that. So that, that is like if you go to Coral Reef. Get that dish for dessert. Definitely. Whether you're plant-based or not, that is the best dessert that I have had at Disney. And I will die on that hill. Or just go make a reservation and just get dessert there. Yeah. You don't just, have to get a full meal. You just you can go, like, for the same thing, Le Cellier. Go for the poutine and leave. Like, yeah. they don't yeah. care. Uh, then was frozen butter beer. So I know there's they're, they're sex to, like, the butter beer fandom. There's some of you people that like it hot. There's some people that like it just regular butter beer, and then there's me that likes it frozen. I think you've had both the regular and the frozen. You I haven't, haven't had it hot. You haven't had the yet. hot, and you I haven't had, had the ice cream. No. Well, or the soft serve. Well, the chances of me eating the soft serve are pretty low. If you take some magic pills, you that can would, do that, one bite. Oof, that one would be, bite. That, that, would be, that would be risky business. May, maybe if they convince me to do it, I'll try it. I don't know about that, though. Maybe 50 likes on this video? 
<sighs> Make it a hundred. Hundred. Make it a hundred. Hundred likes and Bear's going to butterbeer softer. Yeah, that'll be like a a, a a one off Saturday video. So I'm probably gonna have to go home after that. Uh, so. Next up was the Mora Margarita, which is a my favorite. I don't know if the Princess Carrot Stout. Did you get the rum? It was my favorite, um, but since it's gotten less strong and smaller, and I moved yes. on to the Rum Blossom, I kind of like them both. I drink it's changed a lot since the park opened. It's changed flavors, changed colors, and it's shrink. And just the time that Pandora has been open, the rum, the rum. The rum drink is good. The rum blossom. The rum blossom is good. It's cool because you can get like the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic so your kids can feel like they're drinking a drink with you type situation. I just like that they pour, they hand pour the lick the rum on it's it. It's not pre-mixed. So, they're usually stronger yeah. than more margarita. The next up was one of my, even though it's not my highest rated dish, I was in love. I still, I'm still to this day, even though I didn't rate it the highest I rated a dish, have been daydreaming about this dish since I've had it, and that's the seafood pasta from Flying Fish. Now, I got the seafood pasta with an enhancement of grilled octopus. You just missed that octopus. I, it is just the octopus that I missed, because I gave the octopus on its own a 5 out of 5. But I gave the dish a 4, because I didn't think the sauce was as good as it could have been. But I love grilled octopus, and that is the best grilled octopus I've had. And I've never gotten a piece that big. <laughs> I was like a kid at the candy store waiting to eat that. Well, and you can, it's an enhancement. So any dish that you order at Flying Fish, you can, you can do a steak. enhance it. You get a steak and tentacle. It's like hentai. Can I say hentai on YouTube? I think so. That's too late. It's already happened. <laughs> and then next up was the uh, the blood orange braised beet capaccio, which I, I guess I gave that a five. You gave it a five. I love that I dish. gave it a four. You don't like beets, though. You're not a big beet fan. Like I said earlier when we were talking about it, I don't I don't think I would I would not proactively go back and get it, but if it was my first like time it. trying beets, that is the perfect plate for you to try beets. Or if, and if you like beets, you will obsess over this plate. I, I like beets, but I hate cooking them. We've cooked them once at home. A couple and times we made we've an tried. Absolute mess. But I, I I do like beets. Like they, it took a while in the beginning. It was like, eh, but they grow on you if you have I them. Think for me, it was. That's how they're cooked. Open the door for me on beets was uh, Victorian Alberts. They did this beautiful like yellow beet salad, and then um, like a year or two after we did that, we went to Flower and Garden and they had some similar style beet dish, and I was into that one. Like the beet tartare. No, it wasn't a tartare. It was like a landscape of beets, and they were in all different colors. Uh, and it had yeah, like what looked like soil on it, but it wasn't. It was like a crumble of something with like edible flowers. It was like eating the shire. Yeah, it was nice. Mm. It was nice. Then we have the carne asada. That's what I rated. That was your best favorite. Uh, if you're going to the, if you're going to the festival arts before it ends, and you're a beet eater, I definitely recommend the carne asada. Is a not skip. Definitely go get that. Just avoid that stupid lily drink. And then for me, the vegetable skewer from Coral Reef. If you are not going to eat at the festival 100%, that is the table service place that you want to go to. I loved it. Um, especially if you can't get into Space 220, which is nearly impossible these days. Coral Reef is basically the same thing. I think Coral Reef is better food aquarium. anyway than Space 220. It's definitely that, I, I digress. Uh... I think those are because you compared though that skewer the skewer of your people. Yeah, because I think I, I feel like the chef has, has been around the block with Middle Eastern food and knows how to make a good kebab. If you hear that, yes, the kebab did get the Persian princess stamp of approval. It did. I think it's pretty good. Not the best, but I think it's pretty good. It's solid. I can eat that dish and not feel bad about that at all. And then the final thing on the list is the Felucian Kefta from Docking Bay 7. Which I rated high. I, I love that dish a lot more than she does. Like, uh, but I, I gave it a five and put it on the necessity list. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that dish a lot. Probably more than I should. I love it too. The little impossible keftas are just so like dense and full of flavor. And we love anything that's actually seasoned. Also shrinking. 
They, I'm size. sad of how how small it has become. I I thought that these this food sizing thing in Disney would be gradual, though it's basically it's, overnight. I really thought that okay, they'll take from like the mid tier table service places where they were already over serving, or like take from the all you care to enjoy slash buffet experiences where they were already over serving, but not reduce the size of a quick service dish that like. Most people will go and just share that for the day or like it used to be something you could just eat on all day. Now it's something that you like you have to go buy multiple meals if you want if you don't want to bring food to the parks, which like with the way that they're going, we're better off brown bagging it every day. Disney is definitely getting more expensive and uh, I mean that will affect a lot of people. Feel how you will about that. I mean, Disney's sort of raising prices, whether they need to or not, is a whole other discussion. Probably not a video that we're going to tackle. That's a complicated question in and of itself. But we are interested at some point this year of maybe doing um, a brown bag Disney trip. Where we show you guys just how easy it is to bring your own food to eat at Disney. Even though we review food, if you can't afford food at Disney, I 100%. Don't do it. Bring you your own to. food. Bring your own food. Enjoy your trip. Treat yourself like maybe like one dinner. Yeah, but one like is enough. Bring your own food. Eat off property. There would be no issues with that at all. There's okay. some good options in local There's Orlando for lots food. Lots of good local food for, for sure. For far cheaper than you're gonna get at Disney. And you guys have also expressed to us in the comments that some of you are trading your Disney passes for Universal. So we you have, have been asking us to go to yep. Universal more as a result. So we are trying to incorporate that too. Oh yeah, we, we have a long list of restaurants at Universal we have not been to, both quick service and otherwise. And then we'll be revisiting some favorites as well because they have some updated menus. So that's definitely coming. Uh, the more you guys tell us, the sooner we're going to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely look forward to some Universal content in the very, 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 very near future. If there's anywhere else you'd like to see us go, of course, the comments are the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And let us know how you like this format. And then, so until then... We have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And comment to answer all the questions that we asked you in this video. It was a lot, but we'll pen a question just like we do to every video. We'll see you soon. <laughs>